In 2024, when we're buying our tech, doesn't matter if it's a laptop or a phone or whatever it is, we expect it to last longer because the prices right now are going up on every single thing. On an example, let's not forget that the iPhone released with 599 or 499, something like this, and now it's 1099, 1199, 1299, not even to say the foldables at 1799 and stuff like that. So the prices right now are going up in every single way. So when you're buying your phone or a tablet or a laptop, you want it to last longer because you can afford to swap it every single year or every single two years because, you know, it's, it's not practical enough. So when companies are doing something that, you know, it blocks you for using your product how you want, then the government intervenes. And this scenario happens right now with Apple, in the US at least. The government intervenes to stop Apple and to make it work better with other companies, let's call it like this. So open the phone a little bit. Now, the thing is that we have a creator who is an Apple fan and that creator, I'm actually subscribed to it. I, I watch his video, I find it entertainment, but then he released a video on TikTok. That literally doesn't make any sense, at least for me. So in, in his video, he's staying like this. Say goodbye to your iPhone because it's about to become an Android. Yeah, the US government just sued Apple because they think the iPhone is an illegal monopoly and they're proposing these five major changes. iMessage is too good and it's not fair to green bubbles. So we need to make that more fair by allowing third party apps to be default or iMessage on Android. So first of all, iMessage is not too good. iMessage is just a copy of WhatsApp. Telegram, etc. That is just there by default. That's it. The the idea that you have iMessage that you think is superior to other apps is literally it makes me laugh. You you want a good one, a really really good one? Signal. You get your privacy. You get everything. You get features that you should have on a privacy messaging apps or example your message would get deleted after it gets read or your message will get deleted in a couple of hours couple of minutes however you want it's encrypted you also have features like if you send a picture that picture will get deleted after the person sees it so why are we talking about iMessenger is being too good no iMessenger is there by default how RCS is there by default in Android the difference is Android allows you to use other apps that supports RCS as your default messages while iPhone doesn't and this is what they're trying to do let other apps become the default for messages you know iMessage is popular in America let's not forget America is not the only country on the planet you're making a purchase when you're buying the device you're making the purchase with the idea that you can use your device however you want and today Apple is becoming yes a little bit you know freely but it's not free enough. I mean, I have an iPhone, I have an Android, I have my SIM in an iPhone, don't get me wrong, but I only use it because I'm doing the recordings that I'm doing right now. And I have to admit, as an Android guy, iPhone has the best cameras on the planet. Literally, when it comes to video, not photos. Photos, I think Pixel are the best, but video, hands down, iPhone are the best ones on the planet. But then, for me to make a video and saying that oh get ready because android is now forced to accept iMessages as his platform i don't want it i don't use it that's it but with android i have the freedom to use it with iphone i don't this is what they're trying to do it gives you more freedom gives you as a consumer more freedom i can't believe it that we're literally discussing about the idea that oh we can use more app we can do more with our device no no no, no. that's not a good thing it, it is for the consumer it is the apple watch is the most popular watch in the world and if you buy one it only works with the iphone so you're going to want to keep buying an iphone so apple needs to make the apple watch available on android as well so the apple watch story the apple watch yes at the moment apple watch is one of the best selling apple watches on the planet because iphone is the best selling phone on the planet so of course people will buy apple watches to pair them now if i sell my iphone today my apple watch becomes literally a piece of junk I can't use it anymore. It's yeah. If I sold my iPhone, I have to sell my uh, my Apple Watch. Now, maybe I want to use the Apple Watch feature because it still have feature inside of it. You don't need the iPhone for this thing to work. You just need to pair it. Uh, I want to use it with my Android phone. I can't because Apple, Apple being Apple. What they're saying is make an app for Android. That's literally what they're saying. Make an app for Android so people can use it with their Android phone. Now, is there something wrong of me owning an Android phone and an Apple Watch or somebody owning an iPhone 
and the Samsung or OnePlus watch for example there's a lot of reviewers that literally they're saying that oh this watch is the best this phone is the best and normally they're Android and iPhone they can work together there's nothing wrong with companies working together because this is not making the company worse this is making your experience better I, I don't understand how people are literally arguing about this in 2024. Cloud gaming doesn't work as good on the iPhone sometimes as Android, although I think Apple just changed this, but I guess it's not fair enough. So cloud gaming is a little bit tricky because Apple is the only one that doesn't allow Xbox cloud gaming or Nvidia cloud gaming or other cloud gamings to be on their platform. Now, Apple did change this. Yes, the guy is correct. They changed this with iOS. 17.4 but until then it was available so give me an example why apple will literally ban streaming cloud gaming apps but they will allow streaming like movies and apple tvs because i think in my opinion has to do with apple arcade see they were expecting apple arcade to like be this big thing but it's not apple arcade literally the, the games that they release they're not too many games difference from then to now the games are mobile games, so nothing special about them. So they kind of fail. And they thought that it will, they will block Xbox Cloud Gaming, for example, which is the most popular uh, subscription on the planet at the moment when it comes to games. Uh, then they will stop you playing your iPhone games and then uh, you will subscribe to Apple Arcade. Well, I don't want to play Apple Arcade games. I want to play Xbox Cloud Games. You know, I want... The, the, the idea with the cloud streaming services, that means either you can't afford a good computer or Xbox or PlayStation, or you just wanted to play on the go. There's two reasons for you to, to have one, or it's inclusive, how it's with the Xbox Game Pass. Now, if I'm going somewhere with my iPhone, maybe I want to play some Forza Horizon. I have two hours to spare, right? I'm staying in a train, I have two hours. I'm going to play Forza Horizon, you know? It's better for me because cloud gaming doesn't require any resources from the iPhone, so that means the battery will last 10 times longer than playing Apple Arcade games, and uh, I can have fun and enjoy it. And like this, it doesn't affect Apple with nothing. So what what's the, what's the point of not allowing them to be there, but you allow your own platform to be there? And people are actually angry. I, I mean, he just said, Oh, Apple just change it, but I guess it's not good enough. Well, no, Apple just change it, but it shouldn't have to change. You should be able to put it. If I make an application that it will be cloud gaming and I want to put it on an iPhone and then I out of nowhere get rejected because I'm in, I'm in competition with them. Yes, it's their platform. I respect that. Yes, they build it. They improve it. They, they added everything. I wouldn't have this platform without Apple. Respect that, though. I understand things like this. But Apple still takes 30% of my cut. So they made this platform to make money. They didn't make it for you. They didn't make it for, we want to be the best, the safest, blah, blah, blah. No, it's marketing. If you, if you go on Google, you will see that. They're not that privacy focus and everything. So no, you want an example about privacy? Uh, so iPhone is still using SMS, right? Doesn't have encryption, doesn't have nothing. Apple will add RCS, but there are some rumors right now that RCS on Apple is not going to be encrypted with Android users. Why? If those rumors are true, right, and you can search it up, you can Google it, you will find the rumors. If those rumors are true, that means Apple is putting my security at risk intentionally because the other person has an Android. Hit and miss. You see what I'm saying? Apple is not the savior. The Apple Wallet app is restrictive because you can only use Apple Pay and you should have any Wallet app be able to be on your iPhone just like on Android. Now, yeah, with Apple Pay, don't get me wrong, I love Apple Pay. I don't have any problems with Apple Pay, but I do have sometimes problems adding some of the cards that they don't support Apple Pay, but they do support Google Pay. So having the idea I can still use those cards, you know, probably I won't default to Google Pay and the app. I will still use Apple Pay, but it's nice to have the option there so I can open Apple uh, Google Pay, sorry, so I can pay with the card that doesn't support Apple Pay. The idea is the lawsuit is not about, oh, look, we want to do that. No, the lawsuit is about giving you more options as a consumer. You're paying more than a thousand dollars for the phone in your pocket and you can't do whatever you want with it. It's your product, but you can use it how you want to. I want a life wallpaper like this. 
right? I want to put on my iPhone a level paper like this. I want to take and move the icon from here and I want to put it here. Nothing is stopping me, right? Because it's my device and I can make it how I want. iPhone is stopping me from making this on my phone. I mean, one, I can only add pictures. I can't add any animations there for some reason. And uh, I'm pretty sure it has to do with battery life because battery life on an iPhone, everybody's saying battery life on iPhone is 10 times better than an Android, but it's not because an iPhone, it limits your application in the background. But try doing a backup, Google Photos, OneDrive, Synology if you are here in the house, try doing a backup. And then when it's making the backup, put the app in the, uh, in the bar, minimize it, right? It won't work in the background iOS is stopping the backup to preserve battery life. And like this is saying, oh, best battery on the planet. Well, no, Android is doing the backup in the background. Android will continue to do it in the background. And it's still literally very close to iPhones in battery. So which one is better? And Apple needs to be nicer to big everything apps like WeChat because they make it easier to switch from the iPhone to Android. Treating apps like Android. So being friendly with them, right? Now, tell me this. Will iPhone be as popular as this if it didn't have any apps? No, you won't, right? Windows Phone is an example. When people didn't buy Windows Phone because they didn't have any apps available. So if developers will stop supporting iOS, people will stop buying iPhones. As simple as that. And Apple using their power right now to take advantage, to compete, and literally to treat certain developers bad because their application is doing something in competing with an Apple application. I think it's a little bit, you know, not the best tactics. Now, we're in 2024. And I don't buy my phone because I want to support Samsung, Google, iPhone, Apple. I buy my phone because I want to use it as a phone and I will know what to expect from it. And I want to use it as different things, you know, banking, maybe downloading something and things like this. iPhone is still very, very limited in 2024, while Android is not. Now we have people that are coming out and especially uh, this guy over here, huge huge youtuber which I actually subscribe how i said but then for him coming out and saying that oh be careful your android your iphone is becoming an android how is that a bad thing it literally is giving you more options giving you more freedom on how to use your iphone giving you all this thing you don't want to do it you don't use them you stay like this how you are you know you just use iMessages, messengers you just use apple music whatever you want but for us, having an iPhone and then being able to make the, I don't know, Telegram the default messaging app because I don't use iMessage, for example, you know, what's the big deal? You don't have to do it. I can do it. Improves my life, doesn't affect your life. So I don't understand why in 2024 we're still having this thing about what is the best operating system on the planet. You know what? You want to know my opinion? The best operating system on the planet is the operating system who literally serves you and your purposes the way you want it. That's the best operating system for me. That's why I'm having multiple phones, but I only have one iPhone, which is the phone that I'm recording. And then I have multiple Android phones because I can download with them. If I want to download a torrent, for example, I install a torrent client, I download iPhone, I can't. If I want to listen to some music and I don't have the song, I download it from the internet. I can purchase it from the internet or download it illegally from the internet. iPhone, you can't. If I want to install a third party application that you can find on the App Store, I can. iPhone, I can't. Now, I understand security and stuff like this, but then if we're talking about security, there's two different types of security. The first security is that it will protect the iPhone, so make sure that you do not get viruses from the internet and stuff like this. And then the, the second type of security, well, if I'm an idiot and I download stuff from 
you know shady websites then that's on me my iphone got hacked because of me is the same thing like jailbreaking my iphone got jailbreak because of me nobody jailbreak my device apple didn't got infected and my my iphone got jailbreaker no i plugged in the cable and i pressed the button to jailbreak the iphone so there's no security when it comes to things like this you know the the most of the stuff 99 percent of the Android phones, Windows computer, Macs, and stuff like that, they give viruses, it's literally because of us. It's not because of the company. So, Apple, calm down, bro. Let the apps be, be them slow. I want to stream games on your, on your platform. I don't want to use Safari anymore as a browser to play my Xbox games. And uh, big YouTubers, calm down. It's not affecting your life. It's just improving somebody else's life. Your life will still be the same. You can stay on Apple Fan as much as you want. But yeah, this is my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'll speak with you in the next one.